The Formula One series returns in F1 2022, this year marking several key changes to the game's visuals and feature sets on consoles and PC alike. Of course, the series got a true next-gen upgrade with last year's F1 2021. There we were introduced to full native apps on PS5, Xbox Series X and S with ray traced reflections, shadows and even 120 FPS modes on the two premium machines. It was a great first step for the Ego engine, a dipping of the toe on new systems, only slightly let down by the lack of 120 FPS on Series S. But today, well, F1 2022 keeps all of that, but has the chance to go one further. So exactly how do the visuals compare between this and last year's game? How do the consoles stack up to one another, and in particular to a PC with fully maxed out settings? And is 120 FPS actually a lock on PS5 and Series X? Let's find out. Now up front, I will say many of the technical underpinnings of F1 2021, on console at least, stay similar in 2022. Here's a comparison on PS5 between this and last year's game, and honestly, the bulk of what we're getting in actual gameplay is near identical. We get a native 4K picture on PS5 once again, an example here on both sides. DRS is enabled to allow drops in pixel counts, but overwhelmingly this is a 4K presentation once again, with a perfect 60fps in play. Visually speaking, we do see some extra details added to the tracks here and there. Subtle things like additional bloom around the lights on the Abu Dhabi stage here, and likewise more decorative touches to the centre of the track. The overall track design is revamped too, and so you'll see that our route eventually diverges at a select point, meaning our comparison no longer syncs up. The same goes for circuits in Spain and Australia, with both receiving a similar revamp in layout, if not a radical one on the technical front. In direct comparison, the result is more or less as you'd expect, with resolution being the main dividing point. It's a native 4K on PS5 and Series X, and 1080p on Series S, all making use of DRS. But there are some odd differences between them, say if we compare PS5 to Series X. Now, as before, ray traced reflections and shadows only engage outside of gameplay, in pre-race moments, replays, and the main menu. It's why these points all render at 30fps, while the actual racing targets 60fps once ray tracing is disabled. Both PS5 and Series X are matched in their setups in this regard, and likewise this goes for Series S too. Except there's a curious difference. On Series X, for example, the reflection of the steering wheel in the centre on the right side of the cockpit stays fully rendered regardless of where we look. It's a true sign of ray tracing in effect, and looks pretty great. But on PS5, it's a different story. The reflection of the steering wheel appears at first, but then disappears and rematerializes based on screen space information. In other words, a classic sign of SSR. One minute it's reflected across the side of our cockpit on PS5, but once it's out of view of the player, it fades away. On the surface then, it appears PS5 relies on the SSR method for reflections, in this moment at least, while Series X uses proper ray tracing for the cockpit. It's also curious to note that even Series S uses the same RT technique as Series X. So then, you'd assume it's a fault just on PS5, and yet there's another twist here. If we switch over to PC with all settings completely maxed out, including ray trace reflections, our PC shows the same SSR-like technique as a PS5. It's all very curious, and there's a slight chance this is a bug for select platforms. Either way, the end result on Series X and S right now is much closer to what we'd expect of a true ray trace technique, with none of the artifacting we'd expect of SSR. That said, the Ego Engine is obviously a complex beast. Clearly, it relies on multiple techniques to achieve reflections for PC and console alike. So. In replays, for example, you'll notice our PC, with max settings, still uses SSR mixed in with proper ray tracing, and even elements of cube mapping. Looking into puddles, for example, different elements fade in and out depending on the camera angle, 
the cars, trackside details, and roadside barriers each use a different approach. Some depend on screen space information, SSR, while others fall into the ray tracing BVH. In practice then, ray tracing works in much the same way between PS5, Series X, and S, with the exception seemingly being inside these cockpits. As for the other settings, well the differences are few and far between. PS5 appears to have an unusual glitch on reflections, I will say again it looks like a bug. This adds an odd multicoloured artefact under cars in pre-race scenes, but that's really the extent of the differences next to Series X, and most other settings look identical. Looking to Series S meanwhile, it's remarkable how close it is in overall settings to a Series X. I mean, first of all we have to accept it is running at a quarter of the resolution, at a native 1080p, it's still pushing a very similar end result in cutscenes and gameplay in terms of the rest of the effects and settings. The only real visible drawback on Series S is that ray trace reflections are rendered at a lower resolution over the cockpit. Looking to the side before the race, it's a more pixelated appearance, but you'd have to look hard and close to spot it. One final point relates to a new subtle feature for F1 2022, ray traced transparencies. On PC, it adds to an already huge suite of options, where switching RT transparencies on means we get reflections on, well, transparent materials like glass. Actually, this is shown off nicely in the main menus, with car window panes mirroring lights above. The good news? Comparing PC maxed out directly to a console, like Series X here, RT transparencies are seemingly included on console this year. In this case, my Titan RTX couldn't quite hit max settings at 4K, and so I've engaged Nvidia's DLSS setting to enable a stable frame rate, which is why image quality may differ to a native 4K on the right. Again, though, RT transparencies are a subtle enhancement and mostly invisible during a race. Even in this PC footage where ray tracing is possible during gameplay, it's an expensive and rarely cited extra. Still, it's a nice addition to the Ego engine. On the surface then, there are gains on console, if small. Perhaps the bigger additions overall this year are on PC, with ray trace transparencies among them. The other major upgrade is VR support though. F1 2022 is now compatible with a range of VR headsets on PC, nicely suiting the cockpit view. This is a PC exclusive feature for now, and alas, the team at Codemasters have already stated that they have no plans at this time to bring it to PSVR on PS5. Though, perhaps, in the future, it'll find its way over. Also new to PC is support for Nvidia's DLSS scaling technology, as mentioned, and there's plans to add in AMD's equivalent FSR 2.0 down the road, but for now, VR headset support, DLSS, and extra ray tracing features show PC is in a pretty great place. And honestly, for anyone wanting to use the game's top settings, like all the ray tracing toggles, having DLSS support now makes a big difference in keeping performance in check. Last up is the topic of performance. To cut to the chase, both PS5 and Series X are perfectly handled. The idea to chop out ray tracing during gameplay on the surface feels like a bit of a compromise, but makes a huge amount of sense to prioritize 60fps. I mean, even on a Titan RTX, I really struggled to hit 4K resolution at 60fps with all visual settings at max. Actually, even with DLSS set to quality mode, I ended up settling for a 30fps cap during gameplay, since if I let it run unlocked, it'd circulate around the 45fps region. All things considered then, it's a hugely demanding game on PC. And so the fact we're still getting a taste of ray tracing tech in select points on console is something of a win, I think. During gameplay itself, we do lose it, but what's most important there is the 60 FPS target on PS5 and Series X, which is perfectly locked down. This even applies during peak stress points, heavy rain, the maximum car count, and driving on a complex track like Monaco doesn't move the needle under 60. So, as far as the Ego engine is concerned, this is the right call, I think. The right trade-off on console for playability. And even Series S holds up with a solid 60fps.
a final word on the 120Hz mode, also known as the performance mode. This one's just for PS5 and Series X, and this time I did notice a discrepancy here which slightly favours PS5. In running the same stress points, on Monaco, maximum cars, wet weather, there's barely a blip on PS5's reading. It's a rock solid 120fps, typically V-Synced. However, it does appear Series X has more issues in keeping V-Sync. While still holding to 120fps near constantly, there's regular signs of screen tearing on the latest build on Series X. I'll slow this down just to highlight it a bit better, but honestly I'd be very hard pressed to catch it in full motion, at 120fps anyway. The refresh is too fast and the artifact is too subtle, it's more of a nitpick really and the frame rate is practically locked at 120fps. And on a VRR display especially, it'll be even trickier to catch by eye on Series X. On balance then, F1 2022 feels more like an incremental step after last year's blowout of next-gen features like ray tracing and 120Hz. This time we get a suite of optimizations and fixes, while this year a lot of work appears to have also gone into the VR support on PC, the DLSS and of course, extras like ray trace transparencies are a neat bonus all round. On the plus side, as one of the most demanding games on PC, it's impressive how fluidly PS5, Series X and S run it at 60fps. The only sore point is that F1 2022 is missing the breaking point campaign from last year, a story mode charting a young F1's driver's rise via CG cutscenes. There was potential in the idea, it gave the series quite literal character and it feels like it's been thrown away. In its place we get the F1 life mode instead an exhibition space for your cars, but hopefully we'll see some form of story mode return to the series. But that's all I've got on F1 2022 today. Just a quick one honestly, since it does feel like a more slight upgrade compared to last year's. Still, if you did find it useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.